Welcome to lecture number 41, the nucleus part eight. Okay, I want to talk about nuclear bombs and a couple of little things here, okay? Uh, if you remember nuclear fission, we said that uranium comes from the ground. Naturally, less than 1% is 235. 99.3% uh, was this 238. And this was the stuff that was fissionable. Okay, remember? So if you add a neutron to the uranium-235, it fissions and we get all this energy out. The U-238 was not. If we're going to use nuclear power, then we're going to have to find a way to use the U-238. Why? Because the uranium-235 will run out. It's less than 1%. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to make a good, useful fuel out of the 238. This is called a nuclear breeder reactor, and the fuel we're breeding the fissionable fuel is plutonium-239. So what you do is you take the uranium-238, you add a neutron, it becomes uranium-239, which is unstable. How do we know uranium-239 is unstable? How would we know that? The way we would know it, the way we know it is the fact that only 238 and 235 uranium are found in the ground, not U-239. Okay, so if we enrich this and make the uranium the plutonium-239 and all the plutonium on the Earth is man-made, okay? Um, this is, I want you to notice that since the plutonium comes from uranium-238, this is enriched to over 90%, and indeed it can explain, explode like a bomb. And this is the NIMBY principle. People want nuclear reactors, but NIMBY, not in my backyard. Nobody wants a reactor in their backyard. Okay, so nuclear breeder reactors can blow up like a nuclear bomb. Scary. And remember, neutrons, neutrons everywhere. So what that means is that the uh, control rods, the air, the core, the fission products, everything, the water, everything becomes radioactive because of neutrons everywhere. Real mess. Okay, let's talk a bit about the bombs, uh, nuclear fission bombs. The bombs that were dropped on Japan, the one in Hiroshima, I believe, was a uranium bomb, and the one that was dropped on Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. Okay, and all this stuff, all this energy comes from Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. E is energy. M is mass. C is the speed of light. If you remember, C was 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So if you square that, you get something like 10 to the 16th. So for a little bit of mass, you get a lot of energy. The bombs that were dropped on Japan, about a kilogram, about 2 pounds. If you put one into here, m is one kilogram, c squared is about 10 to the 16th, 10 to the 17th. That's a lot of energy. So two pounds of matter was converted to energy and over 100,000 people died. Okay, these are fission bombs. These are the atomic bombs used in World War II. Today, 2020, we do not have, we, do, we, we have fission bombs, but now we use what's called fusion bombs. Remember what fusion was? Remember when we talked about nucleosynthesis, fusing together the isotopes of hydrogen to make other elements? Where does fusion naturally occur? It occurs in stars, where you have temperatures of 100 million degrees. Okay, so how do you make a bomb with a temperature of 100 million degrees? What you do for a fusion bomb, or H-bomb, hydrogen bomb, because it's made of isotopes of hydrogen, what you do is you set off an atomic bomb. So the bombs we have today use atomic bombs to set them off. So let me explain. The bombs that killed 100,000 people in one conversion of energy, 100,000 people are, the, are, are like the match that's lighting the stick of dynamite, the fusion bombs today. So the bombs we have today are thousands of times more powerful than the bombs we had in World War II. So the fusion bombs use atomic bombs to set them off. Isn't that encouraging? And we have, you know, a couple of uh, thousand tons of uh, bombs for every person on the planet. Okay. E equals mc squared. Energy is being converted. Uh, mass is being converted to energy. And I want to say in all, in all nuclear reactions, mass is lost. OK, 
Okay, mass is lost. You need to know this. Mass is being lost. Where is the mass going? It's being converted to energy. We could put a delta M here for the change in mass. So in alpha decay, beta decay, gamma decay, in every nuclear reaction, fish, nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, the mass you start with is greater than the mass you finish with. The mass is being converted into energy. So Einstein wrote this famous equation in 1905. In 1945, the world changed. Many people died. So on a piece of paper writing in Germany in 1905, just scribbling 40 years later, many people died because as a, as a consequence. So every nuclear reaction, mass is being converted to energy, okay? Every single, so mass is disappearing, but it's equivalent to energy. We know how to make mass into energy. If this was Star Trek, we could take mass into energy and then make the energy back to mass, right? They beam, take a person, beam them, make them into energy, beam them at the speed of light, and then put them back together in terms of mass, energy back to mass. We don't know how to do energy to mass. We know how to do mass to energy. We use them in reactors, but unfortunately, we use them in bombs. The one thing humans are very good at, it's killing. We've really mastered mastered the art of killing, okay? So breeder reactors can explode like a bomb because they're made of uranium uh, from, originally from uranium-239, which has a, a uh, concentration of over 99%, and therefore the plutonium-239 has a concentration of over 90%. And so from the physics of it, if things go wrong, it can explode like an atomic bomb. The bombs we have today, these hydrogen bombs, are so powerful, they require atomic bombs to set them off. And we have many thousands. So the world, the Russians, everybody has uh, the Chinese, the Americans have these bombs. There's something called MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction. So the theory is, if you can kill me with an atomic bomb and I can kill you with an atomic bomb, we're not going to use them. That's the hope. Let's hope we stay in peace and that nobody uses any, any of these bombs anytime soon. All right, be well and take care of yourself. See ya.